Barbarian Horde. Today, let me educate you or they're here. Uh, a cooperative adventure game of ordinary citizens versus alien invaders. They're here. Drive off the alien menace with a mop. That's right. Th this game is uh, one to four players age 12 and up. 30 minutes to 60 minutes. You can buy it right now on the gamecrafter.com. I'm going to put the link above, but you'll probably have to remind me to do that. And it's going to be $32.99. You could get this. Best uh, thing of all, little green men come to invade the world. Uh, you can play as different characters, but you can succeed as your main man. That's right. Your main man is one of the game pieces that you can get uh, to use uh, conceptually the idea of the character. Uh, was was created by myself. They said, take a weapon, any weapon that you want, and fight aliens. I said, if there's going to be one weapon your main man uses, it's a mop. Superhero janitor style. I'm beating little mean, little green men down with with a mop. And you can't. You play as your main man and put the hurt on the little green men. Make them realize what's really good. <laughs> Their nugget's going to get busted. Barbarian horde style. So check that out. That's from Carl, uh, one of the members of the YouTube RPG Brigade. And... Uh, definitely a, a board game you're going to pick up this Christmas time for your loved ones who love RPG. It's perfect for mom. It's perfect for dad. It's perfect for the kids. Get three copies for your dog. It doesn't matter. Just buy, buy, buy. And one thing that I don't buy, <laughs> Barbarian Horde, what are we talking about here? Can we find something? And I say, can we find something in D&D that's goofier than the acid board shark? I say yes. Fiendish octopi, and what's worse than that, celestial monkey. Because when I think of heaven, I think of vast hordes of monkeys just jumping everywhere, hurling their feces at you and each other, showing up. Uh, is just really gets to be absurd and goofy. Now we're going to be talking about the conjurer. I erroneously said in one of my previous videos, talking about the specialty wizards of Dungeons and Dragons, that eight out of eight went to the evoker. I am sorry. Because I tried to put the Conjurer as far from my mind as possible. The really bad thing with the Conjurer is it's steeped heavily in real-world mystical traditions. And there's wonderful ways that this concept could have gone about being executed. Early on, it was almost like teleportation spells. And a kobold shows up in front of you, confused. And for some reason, fights for you. He doesn't know why. And we don't know what happened. The whole, you know, where did he get teleported from? So that was a weird kind of deal. This a little bit better in terms of you're dealing with extra planeural things, but you have to have really weak extra planeural things to summon at first level. So the problem is the writers go, well, mechanically speaking, we need to have things to summon out for this summoner or choose a conjurer. Uh, so what are we going to summon? Mm. Celestial dogs, because all dogs go to heaven, right? You, you have a list of that looks like it was put together by a gibbering simpleton. And let's let's just take a look. This is right out of the book. Celestial Dog. This is the first level. Celestial Owl. Celestial Giant Fire Beetle. It's pretty specific for heaven, isn't it? Celestial Porpoise, which I always think is fun. <laughs> In the middle of a desert. <laughs> That's right. That's what you get for being on my Celestial chart. Celestial Badger. Badgers are evil. They're clearly not in heaven. Celestial Monkey. Uh, probably the gooviest of the whole lot. Uh, fiendish dire rat. Fiendish raven. Okay, a rat and a raven. You know, you can look at things like Dracula or the, the omen. Go, uh, begrudgingly, maybe, just maybe. Fiendish monstrous centipede. Fiendish monstrous scorpion. Fiendish hawk. Fiendish monstrous spider. Fiendish snake small viper. And of course, the fiendish octopus. Again, wonderful to drop in the middle of most encounters. You know, you're out there in the middle of a city, uh, 300 miles from any sizable body of, of water, and <laughs> just start summoning a giant octopus, screaming around their head. Uh, really, it, it just starts getting silly. At second level, you can get a celestial giant bee. Just think that in for a minute. Now, Imagine if you saw that on a uh, television show, on a movie. You'd be like, what? Really? Uh, it, it hits the really factor really hard. I do not like conjurers. And I when I, I don't always play wizards. But when I do, I always play specialist. And when I play a specialist wizard, I always drop conjuration immediately. Immediately. So these spells are offensive to me in terms of what I have seen other players do with them. Also, from what I understand... They are the most power game 
of the group. You know, you just summon up monster after monster after monster after monster. Not only is it power game, it, it's two things I hate. It's power gaming, which is which I hate. And then it's something I hate way worse than power gaming, which is grinding. It just grind your game to a halt. I mean, to a halt, to a fault. That's utterly unacceptable, though, isn't it? When you're just unable to really play the game, to experience the game, as you're sitting there having to, well, do nothing other than roll 30 attacks around. Because you got 900 celestial monkeys and, you know, 30 fiendish octopi. So why not summon both of them? I mean, hey. <laughs> I mean, at, at a certain point, uh, you got your, your dire uh, oh, dogs and you, just all this silliness there. First of all, it's really silly. And uh, my, my immersion is, is just getting destroyed by, by that idea. I don't like certain aspects of that cosmologically. But let's just put, let's put that aside. And again, you know, when we talk about the D and D audience, I think it starts. I don't know if this version says. Uh, I believe AD and D said ten years old and up, and conceptually, clearly, that's yeah, something for ten year olds. Uh, an, an adult, at least I hope, all of you out there that are adults aren't like, yeah, celestial monkeys. You're like, at best, at absolute best, you're like, oh, I can't celestial monkey. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm sure I'm going to get hate and just like, ah, I love Celestial Monkeys. I played a Celestial Monkey. My character married a D12 Celestial Monkeys. <laughs> Please don't write that stuff down. It just makes me sad and sorry. But the, uh, the concept is unfortunate because it's so heavily uh, real world mystical. And that is often sadly lacking in D&D and it could be so strongly brought through. The class has every possibility of the Contra class to be the strong, uh, badass, occultish type of wizard in D&D, which a lot of times the wizards of D&D are very cartoony, very sort of scientific-ish. They, 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 have, they have faults uh, in a lot of areas that, that I do not like. And I know you're going to say, oh, well, yeah, but when you're ninth level, you can cast. But, I mean, we got to start at the beginning, man. we got to look at what, what are they doing at the beginning, because if you're the beginning... You don't have for a long time. That's a lot of celestial monkeys. A lot of feces from heaven. Um, and that's really not the sort of thing that I, I'm i interested in. Uh, that plus the fact of how many times you're rolling attack rolls. And then you got the, the player who might not be as perfectly understanding what the monster stats are. So she's pulling through the book and they're wasting more time and they're grinding. But it's the absolute uh, antithesis of immersion. It's, it's grind, which... Uh, it, it, I do not like the grind. I want things to go boom, 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 boom to be like a seamless transition to, to, to really flow. So the the conjurer, even the name conjurer, you know, it's, uh, I just don't care about it. So I consider it a, a, a solid failure. I think that definitely when you're going to be doing the class, you want to use the familiar, you want to have a familiar tie-in. Of course, uh, familiars in D&D, &D, straight normal familiar are really just terrible. It's like, oh, it's just an animal. But, like, dude, that's a ranger's ability. You need to have, like, a spirit with you of some sort of, of caliber. That's what you need as a uh, some sort of occultist. And I think they would personify that more than any other. So if you're going to give somebody, particularly a, a cool familiar, you know, if you want to give somebody, you know, an imp or a closet or a... Or one of those little methods, something like that. I think a conjurer really makes a lot of sense to have a powered up familiar. I think they make a lot of sense uh, in that area. But one of the other problems with conjuration is it happens like that. Conjuration spells should be very, very slow. They should probably have very long durations and be very slow, like not being able to do in combat slow. You know, you have to get down, light your candles, light your incense, uh, put up your bowl of blood or water or milk or honey, put up you know, your, your bladed implement, draw your circle, draw, you know, your, your uh, uh, writings in whatever tongue, you know, whether you need to do a celestial, infernal, uh, abyssal, uh, ignin, terran, whatever you're doing. You're writing those those runes around there to, to conjure up and summon on the true names. You're, you're writing up the mathematical symbols so that you can 
open the gate because that's what they're doing open this little gate to to another plane of existence and bringing this creature through it's an enormous thing to summon something so it should come across as a big deal and and not just very mechanic-y their summoning comes off very mechanic-y and within the ring of fire which two of this plug there is a calling an advantage based system there's no level uh, uh base there's no level based classes there's no classes in the game and the summoner is very much what i think that should be so let me pull up spirits and possess get, get people possessed can can take the possession like themselves like like a voodoo and have that spirit in them and gain those benefits to have these long uh drawn out sequences using of uh, the chords of music the uh, sonic resonance using mathematical equations and symbols using ancient script and writing uh, designing circles to protect yourself from things summoned or ward things off that's to me what a summoner is and that's um, what a summoner really should be the conjurer even as the name conjurer sounds very silly very illusionist uh clownish like a fool a joker you understand whereas uh, to me uh, i find that particularly when you're dealing with things you know if you eventually have the power to call them devils and and demons and so forth you, you shouldn't be calling up celestial monkeys you 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 you, you summon uh the greater uh pit fiend known as your main man <laughs> you're just gonna get joked you'll be joked for like hours about all of those celestial monkeys you summon up you're gonna be ego whipped you're gonna be demoralized you're gonna be mentally overrun and trampled into oblivion doesn't matter about your your wards and such forth it's just gets to be a bit silly so for me magic should be a lot of things it shouldn't be silly and light particularly particularly in there this should be a really hard bedrock cultist serious class not a he he you know the celestial monkey something that i would see a kinder with a wand of wonder bringing into i mean it's it's that level of stuff now if you like kinders with wand of wonder have me watching my video before but it's something that i would i want to see is a lot of real meat and seriousness there grimness darkness with a class i don't want to see celestial monkeys now you let me know in the comments below do you like celestial monkeys or do you really like them and what about a fiendish octopi <laughs>